So what we're looking at right here is just simply an equilibrium problem, right? So we have the uh, reaction, we have methane and H2O, and then they're in equilibrium to form carbon monoxide, and then three moles of H2. So, um, you know, reading through the problem, right, it says, suppose that both the water pressure and the methane pressure are one bar, and that all of the carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas were generated in this reaction, given that Kp, and so Kp is the um, equilibrium uh, value uh, in terms of pressure is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7 bar squared. What is the carbon monoxide pressure at equilibrium, essentially? And so the way to approach this, right, first things first, equilibrium problem, we want to set up an ice table. So if we uh, write out the equation, right, we have CH4 plus H2O is in equilibrium to form CO and then 3H2. Initially, right, the conditions are that we have one bar of CH4, we have one bar of H2O, and then we have zero CO and zero H2. So in terms of the change, right, looking at it, we can just simply tell we're going to lose X amount of CH4 and X amount of H2O. And that's because, um, you know, there's not really a limiting reactant, right? We're talking about equilibrium here. And we know that the ratio of CH4 to H2O is one to one. So we're going to lose one X equivalent of each one of those. And so then on the case of the, the CO and the H2, we can tell that, you know, for if we use up one equivalent of CH4, right, one X equivalent, we should then make one equivalent, uh, one X equivalent of CO. And then in the case of the H2, what we should do is make three X equivalents, right? Because for every mole of CH4 and every mole of H2O, right, that gets consumed in this reaction, we're gonna be forming three moles of H2, right? So that's why it's three X in this instance. And so then now uh, uh, for the E, right, for the end part, we just simply have one minus X. Um, bar for the CH4, we have one minus X bar for the H2O, and so then we should get X bar of CO, and then three X bar of H2 in that case. So looking at uh, 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 the next step, right, now we wanna set up our equilibrium expression. So we have Kp is gonna be equal to the concentration of the products over the reactants, right? So we have the concentration of CO, we have the concentration of H2. And now one important thing to think about, right, is because we have the coefficient of three in front of the H2, we have to have uh, uh, the exponent of three, um, in this case on the, on the H2, right? So it has to be cubed. And then at the bottom, right, we have our reactants. And so we have the concentration of CH4 times the concentration of H2O. Right, so that's just simply the generic values that we have here. So what we can do now is we can now plug in all of the different values that we have. So we have, let me just simply block this whole thing off so we don't get confused. And so what we have here, right, so the Kp value is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative seven bar squared is equal to the concentration of CO. So we know the concentration of CO at the end is gonna be equal to X. We know that in the case of the concentration of H2, right, that's going to be equal to 3x. And so that's going to be cubed then. And then next we know that for CH4 and for H2O, right, for each one of those, those concentrations will be 1 minus x in those cases, right? So we have 1 minus x and then 1 minus x. And so one nice thing that we can do right, is we can make some assumptions. And so a really good assumption that you can make if you have an equilibrium constant that has a value that is, you know, times 10 to the negative seven, right, like a really, really, really small value, is you can probably assume that the changes, like that the amount that you're going to be changing those initial values of the reactants is actually going to be pretty minimal um, in that case, right? So if it's usually something less than 5%, what you can do is as an approximation, you can just simply cancel out, right, everything that's down there in the in the denominator, right? And that makes the, the equation much more, uh, um, uh, um, you know, e much more easy to calculate. And so um, we can make that assumption right now, right? Because we're at 1.8 times 10 to the negative seven. That's telling us that the equilibrium is really favoring the reactant side. And so you're really not gonna be losing that much from the reactants to the point where it's really going to be impacting, uh, um, you know, the value that you get at the bottom. And so you can pretty much just assume that to be one. 
um, in this case right here. And so we really only have to focus on the, uh, uh, the numerator in this case, right? So the x times the 3x cubed. And so the next step that we want to do, right, is we kind of want to resolve that, uh, uh, um, you know, that parentheses and that cube. So what we can see next is, right, we're going to have x times 27x cubed, right? Because the thing to think about is that that cube encompasses that 3x. And so we're going to be cubing the 3, right? Which gives us the 27. And then we're also going to be cubing the x. And so that's how we're getting 27x cubed. And so then what we can see next, right, is if we resolve now the x times the 27x cubed is that we get 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7 bar squared is equal to, and I actually, we can actually just simply drop uh, uh, um, the unit in this specific case right here, right, because we know that the x uh, 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 values are all going to be in bar, right, so we don't have to worry about that unit right now. But what we'll get is 27x to the power of, oops, sorry, that's written poorly, 27x to the power of 4 in this case. Um, right, and so now all we have to do is we can just simply solve for x. So if we just simply plug into our calculator and uh, uh, solve it in this case right here, what we get is x is equal to 0 0.009. Uh, essentially, right? And the reason that we can just simply say nine is that if we're thinking about the sig figs, right, we have a sig fig value of one for uh, the pressure of the CH4 and the H2O, right? So those only have one sig fig values um, in those instances, um, right? And so that's and that's how we get that, right? So now we have the pressure of, of X in this case. The question is asking, what is the pressure of the carbon monoxide? We know that the end pressure of carbon monoxide is equal to X. And so we can just simply say, right, that the, that pressure is 0 0.009 bar. Um, or if you wanted to, to put it into scientific notation, right it would be 9 times 10 to the negative 3 bar in this case